Hey, I'm Peter Robinson. I'm here to talk about basically the state of Tadura on Arm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be covering um, both um, V7 and AR64. I'm going to run fairly quickly through most of this. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask as we go. Um, and the slides are fairly basic, so there'll be a bunch of other information as I go. Um, Yeah, so, so server and I mean, overall, uh, both ARM v7 and AR64 are now pretty damn boring. Pretty much everything is supported in the user space. Everything builds um, and everything just continues to roll along. Um, in the server and cloud space, so Docker base image, cloud images, uh, server installers, various other bits and pieces. Um, all relatively straightforward, all looks exactly like x86, um, all operates exactly as expected, um, pretty much nicely boring. Um, and in Fedora 27, um, Adam Miller has been working on the multi-arch stuff um, and the modularity team has been working to a degree on the multi-arch stuff, so for F27, when modularity um, happens, um, you know, it'll be there for the ARM architectures as well, exactly as you would expect for x86. Um, the current plan is to um, promote um, server for AR64 in F28 timeframe. I've spoken to a bunch of people about it. I need to get around to filing um, changes and Fesco tickets and various other bits and pieces, RELENG tickets, um, because they've got vast amounts of work to do, like flipping bits for locations of um, output and various other bits and pieces. But overall, it's, it's all there and it works exactly as you would expect. Um, workstation, and in particular, accelerated GPU support um, is starting to get quite interesting. Going back a few years, we literally had nothing um, that was open accelerated drivers for ARM and the ecosystem there as a whole was fairly terrible. Now we have a handful of um, different fully accelerated. So Aetna Vidon, like the IMX6 and a few other SOCs, um, the Tegra stuff in the more modern GPUs is all supported by the Nuvo driver out of the box. Um, Rob Clark has been working on the Freedrino driver and will have um, a couple of devices, or at least one device, um, that that works on out of the box, 64-bit, um, uh, 96-board Dragon board um, for Fedora 26. You should be able to run a fully accelerated uh, workstation out of the box. Um, and, of course, there's the Raspberry Pi with their open driver where we've supported um, accelerated drivers on workstation since um, Fedora 25 and we'll be bringing um, that to 64-bit as well. Um, in F27. So o overall, the GPU support has been looking quite good. And, and there's some other interesting stuff coming along there as well. So um, media acceleration and offload. So similar to the way you sort of Android phone can do like full screen video without using huge amounts of CPU and battery, uh, we'll be able to do similar sort of stuff on ARM. So. There's some interesting stuff coming in there um, which will make things like media centres and other related things quite interesting on Fedora because we'll be able to do fully accelerated offload um, of things like H.264 without actually having to ship any codecs and stuff because it'll all just happen um, in hardware, basically. Um, and finally, 64-bit um, single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi um, will finally support in Fedora 27. I was going to hopefully do a demo 
but it wasn't working and the demo gods weren't with me and the Fedora Compose process wasn't quite with me. But um, so the way we're working um, for things like the Pine64 and the Raspberry Pi and some of the 96 board stuff, but basically any of the ARM 64-bit single board computers will be uh, UEFI and Grub boot. So basically it will look exactly like an x86 laptop. You'll get a Grub menu, it'll boot, work, work exactly as you would expect. Um, I mean, some of the advantage of that is we get um, single code paths across SPSA compliance servers and like SBCs and things like that. And basically uh, everything is just nice and simple and works as expected. So there'll be, um, so a couple of low 64 device, bit devices like the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Dragon Board, um, you'll be able to do fully accelerated um, workstation on tiny little sort of boards and, and stuff like that. So, so th I've been asked for ages, when are we going to support that sort of stuff? And I've been working on it for ages and we're finally sort of aligned and got all the bits needed into the right places um, with huge help from people like Rob Clark and Mr. Jones and various other upstream maintainers. Uh, you know, it's in a nice position and you know, if, if you find me tomorrow, you should be, I should be able to demo it for you if you're interested. So, so there's um, a bunch of stuff there where, you know, finally we're basically becoming normal and boring and everything just works exactly as it would on um, any other device. Um, and the other thing that people ask me about is things like network and storage and stuff like that. Um, there's a, a bunch of cheap, um, single board computers and similar that can do some interesting network stuff with network switches and things like that and we're slowly getting some support upstream and speaking with some vendors and getting them to do some work and various other bits and pieces around things like network function, uh, network function virtualization uh, with things like open v switch and stuff um, and like those sort of devices are things like the espresso bin and the macchiato bin and other sort of devices like that where we end up um, being able to do some interesting sort of use case and testing around uh, like storage, networking, various other embedded use cases that are, um, a lot of people are interested in. So, I mean, ultimately the ARM stuff now is nicely boring and basically just works. And so rather than chasing our tail, fixing like user space compile problems and various other bits and pieces like that, we're now looking at sort of where the ARM stuff is cool, where we can sort of value add. So IoT related stuff is obviously my day job and we're looking at a bunch of things around that and I'm speaking to a bunch of vendors and partners that are interested in doing things around that and actively contributing into Fedora. Um, I think in Fedora 26, we've had engagement from maybe 12 different um, vendors where they're actively hanging out on the IRC channel, they're actively testing and fixing bugs and contributing patches and features into Fedora. And it's taken us a long time to get there, but it's kind of cool seeing you know, various different ARM SOC vendors sort of contributing straight into Fedora stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm getting to the point where there's some things that I previously had to do all myself and people are just like, ARM vendors are coming in and going, hey, we're seeing you need that, so um, we're just gonna get on and do it. So, um, and I didn't actually put it on the slide because I didn't think of it at the time, but um, shortly, we should be able to start to provide copper for ARM64 as well. Um, actually have the hardware on its way or may even be sitting in the data center already. Um, and we just basically need um, power and network and a few other bits and pieces um, which are being worked on so that we can um, enable copper. Because I think the 64-bit um, 
single board computers and copper are probably the two biggest questions I get asked around ARM64. So um, I'm looking forward to, similarly when I added support for the Raspberry Pi, I'm looking forward to be able to say, hey, it's done, it's over there, just go and use it. So um, I think that's about it. Has anyone got any questions? It is. So basically, we use U-Boot, um, and initially it was implemented by SUSE, and that was sort of just enough UEFI. Um, and then um, Rob Clark and another guy, which I can't remember his name, who I think is part of the Debian project, and a couple of other individuals have done a bunch of functionality where basically U-Boot emulates UEFI to enable us to basically run Grub and, and various other bits and pieces. There was a patch set that came through on the list a few weeks ago which implements all the UEFI network services so you can run things like iPixie and stuff like that on them. And so basically, so in some cases the devices have Tiano Core, which is the, I suppose you'd say the upstream. <laughs> Yeah, reference implementation of UEFI, and, and so that just works as if it was like, but in, in some cases, that is a large, complex beefs, and companies coming from the embedded side where they've dealt with U-Boot a lot, are, are suddenly like, oh well, if we can do this within U, oh, UEFI within U-Boot, um, it gives us a, a way of supporting that, plus our old style boot methods with a single code base. So. And then, uh, so that's now, and we don't have, it, it, everything's not quite upstream, but we're not far from it. And I'm speaking to vendors, like board manufacturers and things like that, saying, we want SPI flash on these devices, and we want you to either put Tiano Core on that flash, or we want you to put U-Boot with the UFI support on that flash, so that we can just plug in a Fedora SD card and it just boots. Or you can plug in a Debian, or you can plug in a SUSE SD card and it'll just work. And so these are conversations which three, four years ago I would never have with vendors. And now vendors are coming to me, how can we make this easier? What do we need to do to enable this? And, and so it's interesting because suddenly we're getting to a point where stuff just works. Like, I got an email from um, Evan Upton, the creator of the Raspberry Pi, going, hey, I've heard you're do doing 64-bit with UEFI and grabbing that on the Pi. Can you demo it to me? And it's like, that's an email I never thought I would get. So, so you know, it's been a bit of a long haul, but th there's some really cool stuff happening. And then on top of that, we're starting to do things like machine learning and AI and stuff like that. So, you know, rather than doing bare metal, does this board work? The vendors are starting to take over that and I'm slowly starting to be able to like do IoT things on top and stuff like that, which is ultimately what I wanted to do when I first started to scratch the arm itch seven or eight years ago. <laughs> so people would call me a little persistent or, you know. Any more questions? What do you mean by the problems between servers and SPCs? I mean, like there's a front-end Kubernetes module for a server versus um, like another Kubernetes module that's paired off to the SPC. So there has been a few trade-offs we've had to make. Um, so the enterprise OS supports 64K page sizes. We've had to go with 4K page sizes because we need CMA, and CMA with 64K page sizes takes up half a gig of RAM, which basically makes, say, the Pi 3 unusable. Um, so there's a, but that ends up being a trade-off, not really between server and workstation, although it may end up being for super large, like multi-terabyte size servers. Um, 
But, I mean, I don't think it's going to change that much because, I mean, ultimately, even on x86, we have monster server HPC cluster versus, like, laptops and other such devices. And, you know, there's compromises that have to be made there and I don't see that that's any different on, you know, on ARM versus x86. Um, maybe the SP, like the single board computers and that are smaller specs than you would generally see on say an x86 laptop, but there's sort of still similar sort of trade-offs that need to happen there. So I don't think it would get any worse. Um, certainly there's probably use cases that are slightly different that might have more of an impact, but you know, I don't, I haven't generally seen any sort of major sort of alarm bells that have been ringing. Anyone else? Jared? Um, so, yes, in some cases Fedora does run slower. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a case in point, um, and part of that is we use pure upstream, and there's reasons for that. Um, one, maintainership. I don't have the time or the interest in maintaining 30 different vendor branches. Um, one of the advantages we get of that is we don't get things like vendor included backdoors and other such things that was say in like a bunch of the all winner code that other distributions just blanket shipped and that but like in so in the Raspberry Pi case in Fedora 25 it was pretty goddamn slow um, in Fedora 26 um, I did a bunch of work and we went from I think about eight megabytes a second on a class 10 SD card to 26, 28 megabytes a second, um, which m made things a whole lot faster. Was um, the same parameters? There was a combination of stuff. There was some bugs and in the process of enabling. So the Raspberry Pi is kind of interesting in that most ARM um, SBCs will include like three to five or eight MMC controllers on board to drive different things, and they will all be the same IP running the same driver. The Raspberry Pi, for some reason, has two completely different sets of IP for the two MMC controllers that are on board. Um, one of the cool things with a bunch of the ARM hardware is that you can basically reconfigure how the wo um, hardware works by adjusting the pin marksing. And so one of the things that happen is when the driver for the Wi-Fi, like for the MMC controller that the Wi-Fi is connected to went upstream, that one's actually faster. So we flipped the pin marks, which meant basically the SD card got one controller that's a lot faster and it gave us more I.O. Um, and there was a issue around the DMA driver where we got a bug fixed upstream and we weren't including it in the init RD. So when the MMC can, so like, so that fixed a whole bunch of stuff. The one big remaining problem with speed on the Raspberry Pi is there's not an upstream CPU frequency driver. So it's running at 600 megahertz, not the potential 1200 megahertz. Um, and yeah, so, and that's the case along across a number of different stuff. If you ship the vendor kernel, they have some optimizations for it and where shipping the upstream kernel and like similarly with the vendor drip kernel in some cases you can get like the proprietary GPU binaries working um, and obviously that's not stuff we're interested in and so like a bunch but like so the orange pie stuff for example people have told me that actually the Fedora stuff runs much faster than some of the vendor stuff because there's been optimizations upstream. So it swings and roundabouts, and you know, sometimes we're not quite as fully featured on some of the devices simply because the code's not upstream. And I don't want to, and I don't think the rest of the Fedora kernel team wants like a million lines of patch code in there because that's just not pleasant for anyone. Um, 
And so, you know, there are some devices like the Orange Pi stuff, which at the moment is great for IoT and servery stuff because it doesn't have the display. Um, and, you know, people ask me, what is the best ARM device to buy for Fedora? And the first thing I reply is, what do you want to do with it? Um, because, obviously, different tools for different jobs, right? If, if you want fast network throughput, the Raspberry Pi is not it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's complex, basically. Any more questions? Cool. Thank you.